Welcome. This lesson is on geometric series. If you've seen the video on arithmetic series, that might help. Um, it might also help if you have seen something on geometric sequences before. But I'm going to make a geometric series. We're going to talk about it a little bit. And then we're going to talk about how to find the sum, which is really the whole point of geometric series in general. So um, first things first, let's make a geometric series. And I'm going to make a very simple one or what I hope is a very simple one. Actually, I'm going to go even more simple than this because there's one like this later on that I don't want to, to waste. So I'm going to go 2, 4, 8, 16, and 32. If I put commas here, then I'm dealing with a geometric sequence. And the reason I know it's geometric is because if I try to find common differences, which would make it an arithmetic series, if I did 4 minus 2, it's 2. 8 minus 4 is 4. So it's not an arithmetic relationship. I'm not going up by a common difference. But if I do a ratio of one term to the next by dividing, of course, that's how ratios work, I end up with a common ratio here of two. So right now I have essentially a geometric sequence. The nice part of it is to make it a series, all I'm going to do is add it together. Now right now we're not at any point that it's super difficult to figure out what the value of the sum of this or some you might see evaluate this series. It means what's the sum. In this case it's 62. But uh, you know, what happens if you have a much bigger series? It's going to be much harder to figure it out. So fortunately, there is a bit of a uh, formula for it, which is this. And I'm going to talk about it more in depth in just a minute. But it's S of N is equal to A sub 1 times 1 minus the common ratio raised to the number of the powers equal to number of terms over one minus r. Like I said, we're going to talk about that more in just a minute. But it's also helpful if you remember the explicit definition or explicit formula for a geometric sequence as well, just because it'll help us uh, later on when we try to figure out one of the numbers. So that again is a sub n, which is the what the value of the biggest term is equal to the value of the first term times the common difference raised to the n minus 1 power. And if you don't remember, the n minus 1 thing occurs based on the idea that uh, this would be 2, because we have to have a starting point with our sequence, or our series, I'm sorry. Uh, if we're going to raise it, I would raise it to 2 to the 0 power. And the reason I chose 2 here is because it's the common ratio. 4 is the equivalent of 2 times 2 to the first power. 2 times 2 to the second power is 8 and that whole thing. But the term numbers, this is the third term, so I have to have some way to adjust to the it's not 3, it's 2 thing. So we pop in the n minus 1. Now, let's uh, talk about the formula for the sum of a series a little bit more in depth. Now, I found this uh, explanation of where it all comes from. This weirdo formula. Uh, essentially, what they did to figure it out, it's very mathy. Uh, where it went. So if you want to skip over this part, I'm only going to talk about it for about 30 seconds to a minute. But anyway, they took the original term, uh, the original sequence, and a generic sequence that goes all the way up to uh, the last term would be uh, whatever the common, whatever the starting number is times the common ratio of n and then n minus one, of course. That's the nth term. Now, um, if I multiply both the sides by r, I end up with this. And if I compare it to this. Uh, basically, I'm subtracting. I'm doing this minus this. It gives me this kind of look on the left side. On the right side, everything would eliminate because this term exists here and here. So all I'd be left with is this term and this term right here. Remember, I'm subtracting, so I'm left with this. They popped a common difference out of A. Uh, here they popped out a common difference of uh, S of N and then they have to divide both sides by 1 minus r. Very mathy, like I said. But let's not talk about where it comes from, because in almost every case uh, that you see it, it will probably have a formula relatively handy that you can use if you need it. So let's kind of move away from that for a while and talk about uh, using it. That's much more important. Uh, so we're going to use this uh, the formula here to figure out the, uh, evaluate this series, or find out the sum of this series. So the first thing I'm going to do is write down the formula. I know it's an amazing idea that I would write down the formula that I'm going to need in a few minutes, but uh, or in a minute or two, but it is where I'm going to go with this. If I get my pen to do it, I want to. That would be even better. So S of N 
is equal to a sub 1 times 1 minus the common difference raised to the nth power over 1 minus r. Now, we have this. There's a couple parts that we're going to need in order to plug it in. Like this says a sub 1 right here, so I'm going to need to know that the a sub 1 is the first term. In this case, it's 3, because it's the first one there. Um, the r I need to figure out, and really this one's pretty easy to see. It's 3 times 2 is 6, 6 times 2 is 12, so my r value is going to be 2. If it's not so easy, remember, you can just take the term to the right and divide it by the term to the left, and assuming you have a geometric series in play, you can have a common ratio anyway. So now we have everything we need except we need to know the number of terms. And uh, the way that we can get that would be to use the explicit formula for a geometric sequence, which is why I showed it to you earlier. So I'm going to write that down. a sub n is equal to uh, a sub 1 times the common ratio raised to the n minus 1. I'm going to separate this out with a times here. Usually I'll just push them together, but I have to make a point about them in just a second. So it is what it is. The last term is 3072. Uh, this term is 3. My common ratio is 2 to the n minus 1. Now I'm just going to clear everything up because I'm trying to get n by itself, so I'm going to divide by 3 here. So on this side I'm bringing down 2 to the n minus 1. And on the flip side I'm going to bring down 10 or 1024 because I'm dividing by 3. So now I have that these two parts are equal. As you can see, this is a power raised, uh, or a base raised by a power. So I need to figure out, is there something that I can do where I could fill in some number here to get to that 1024? Because if I can do that, I'm, along, I'm really close to where I need to be. Well, I've you know, fiddled around a little bit and figured out that uh, 10 to the 24, or 10,000, 10,000, 1,024 is the same as 2 to the 10th power. So the little box I needed to fill in is going to be 10. Now, I'm going to compare the boxes at this point and say that 10 is equal to n minus 1. And of course, I'm going to add 1 to both sides. So I can say that my n value is equal to 11. And all I did was say that this is an exponent, so is there something that 2 can be raised to that gives me this? I'm just sort of interchanging those two things. Now I can just plug it into the formula. Real simple stuff. a sub 1 here is 3. 1 minus the common ratio here, of course, is 2. And I'm going to raise that to the 11th power, just because there's 11 terms in my little uh, series here. And then it's just 1 minus 2 on the bottom. So if I do 1 minus 2 to the 11th power, I end up with 3 times negative 2047. And on the bottom, 1 minus 2 is just negative 1. Multiply the top by 3, you end up with negative 6141. And I'm still dividing by that negative one, so my final S of N answer is 6,141. That's one of the types, I mean, it's not that big of a deal for, and by the way, I should say these are finite geometric series. Finite means that they actually have an end point. There's a beginning and an end. You, uh, there's a whole other universe involved with an infinite series, but uh, that's another video. Anyway, let's look at one more. This one is uh, series notation, which uh, if you haven't seen the video about uh, arithmetic sequences or a series, I'm sorry, it might be super helpful to you. I'm going to show you how to do this the long way, and then I'm going to show you how much easier it is to do in the calculator, and you can sort of pick which one is most useful to you. I mean, they both have some value, I guess, but I mean, if it's a gigantic series, there's no reason to sit there and beat your head against the wall trying to figure it out manually, but you can do it. The nice thing about the series notation is it does make it easier to plug into our formula. So there's something. S sub n is equal to a sub 1 times 1 minus r raised to the n power. That's an n over 1 minus r. Now most of it's given to us. The a sub 1 term, since my uh, series starts at 0, n of 0, and ends at 10, um, I'm going to say that my first term, or a sub 1, all I'm going to do is plug a 0 in right there. So I'm getting this type of thing. And anything raised to the 0 power is just 1, so it's 6 times 1. And my final answer for my a sub 1 is that it is 6. 
Uh, now the number of terms thing, a little bit more complicated than you would think. It tells me the first term and it tells me the last term. The immediate thing is to jump, or guess, is to jump over and write the n as 10. But it's really not, because when you count to 10 from 0, you never say 0 first. You always count 1, 2, 3, 4. In order to make sure that you cover everything, if it starts at 0, and goes up to 10, that means that's 11. So count 0 on your fingers and you can see you, don't, you need one more finger to make it work. So our n value here is 11 and our common ratio is the part that's being changed by the power so our common ratio is negative 3. Now all that stuff is there I just need to plug them into the equation so I'm going to say 6 here then I'm going to need to do 1 minus negative 3 raised to the 11th power. And I'm going to do like a little extra parentheses here. It doesn't really matter as much because I'm raising it to an odd power, but it's good practice. If it's negative 3 squared versus negative 3 that's squared, these two things are not the same thing. This says negative 3 times negative 3, which will give you 9. This says 3 to the second power times negative 1, which gives you negative 9. Obviously, they're going to give you pretty significantly different answers, so you don't want to do both. On the other side of it, 1 minus negative 3. Now, if I go ahead and do everything in parentheses here, I do 1 minus negative 3 raised to the 11th power, I end up with a gigantic number, by the way. It will be a big answer here. 6 times 177,148. On the bottom, 1 minus negative 3 is 4. Uh, there's a, I could do a 3 over 2 thing here, but I'm not really going to do that. I'm going to multiply the 177,000 number by 6 and end up with 1,062,000 888. And then I'm going to divide it by that measly 4 to get a final answer of 20, uh, sorry, 265,722. Now, I believe any reasonable person would think that, you know, if you could do it in a different way, you probably would. So I'm going to show you how you can use your TI-84 Plus or whatever related calculator to get there. Um, see if I can pop mine up. I do own one, by the way. I have a color version. Uh, I'm not trying to brag. I'm just saying I'm using an emulator, so I didn't want TI to think I was stealing their stuff. I own one. Uh, it's pretty nice. Thanks for the making them in color. It's pretty. Anyway, um, so if you have one, first you need to turn on, of course. But I have the notation, and that's the important part. I've got this uh, sort of sigma and this series notation. So just go into the math section, and if you go down to uh, zero, or you hit zero, it'll take you directly there. You've got this alphanumeric thing here. That wants you to name what your variable is, and I'm going to say it's n. It starts at zero. It goes to 10, so click up. It's a bit like the old Game Boy directional pad at this point. Um, so I need to go over and do six times, and just for the sake of integrity, I'm going to put that in parentheses as well. I'm going to raise it to the nth power, so you'll need to have alpha and n to let it know that you want to, and n, all the alpha buttons are in green, by the way. So it should look pretty much like this. You see you've got the 0 and the 10, it says 6 times, and negative 3 to the n power. And then you'll just hit enter, and there you go. Two, uh, 265,722. That's a quick way to get it if it's already in sigma notation. So, I mean, if you have it, why wouldn't you use it? I can't. I'm not going to do long-term uh, simulations without using a computer, so why wouldn't I use a calculator I have access to it? If you have to do it by hand, work it out the way that I showed you the first time. If not, do it on your calculator. I mean, I can't imagine your teacher would be really mad about you not doing all of them by hand, but maybe they will. I don't know. Uh, so choose your own adventure a little bit, but uh, that's it. Geometric series in terms of finite geometric series. Uh, hopefully it is helpful to you, and just go back and watch individual parts. Plug in ones that sort of meet the criteria that you need. Pretty simple stuff as long as you have the formula in front of you and you can get all the rest of the information. So good luck.